second presenter is Yun Yong An. Um, she's going to, um, her research interest is in um, English language teacher, professional development and education. And um, she's also conducting research um, international student, uh, international graduate students, academic leaders. So, well, thank you for the introduction. Yeah. So my study is about a social cultural analysis of Korean non-native English speaking teachers, perceptions of or proficiency, and also their perceptions of relating context to so because I conducted my research in different settings, South Korea, I just need to briefly introduce um, some of important um, settings. So back in 1994, uh, the government introduced the communicative language teaching newly in Korean English education. It, and it has a lot of challenges for English teachers because many of them at the time, they're not really trained to teach communicative language teaching in their classroom. So throughout um, many studies, um, their lack of teachers, lack of work proficiency, and lack of their confidence in spoken language are blamed by teachers themselves, but also by others like stakeholders such as policymakers. And also some researchers have found a strong relationship between teachers or proficiency and their use of English in their classroom. So, um, a statistically significant relationship has found between two, but surprisingly, I didn't see any study about um, teachers or proficiency. So I started my study from the question, like how do middle school teacher, um, Korean English teachers and teacher educators perceive adequate proficiency for middle school teachers? And also other contextual challenges such as social, economical, or even sometimes political issues that impinging on the successful use of English in their classroom. And because I am also inter interested in providing feasible implications for teacher education and professional development, at the end, that is my ultimate goal, so I included this last research question here. And I chose um, a social culture perspective as my theoretical framework because it says teachers' knowledge comes from participating in the social practices of learning and teaching in specific classroom and also in specific school situations. So I'm just looking at teachers' perceptions of or proficiency in their classroom in very specific setting in South Korea. And also the perspective sees teachers as lifelong learners of teaching, so I like it too. And also I chose um, the, human, the model of human activity system from activity theory um, to analyze my data. So it allows me to see a holistic view of human activities with, within activities, so it will show me how teaching um, in South Korea is interrelated to other factors. Uh, so I conducted this research last summer and I stayed when I went to South Korea like four or uh, six or seven weeks and I started recruiting when I was South Korea so I had very limited time of uh, time for this study. Uh, I recruited nine middle school English teachers and also three professors from one English education department. They are all from the same city. And I purposefully chose middle school teachers because the literature shows that they have more room for um, communicative activities compared to high school teachers. High school teachers, um, usually they need to, need to be concerned very much about university entrance exams, so they are more concentrated on teaching reading and grammar to prepare their students for those um, exams. And because my last research question is providing implications for teacher education. I chose, uh, chose to recruit professors um, as a, a representative of stake stakeholders. And here's the selected um, features of the most recent national curriculum for um, English middle, uh, middle school English education in South Korea. So the government wanted to be student-oriented, communicative, meaningful, 
and they want also st students to achieve cultural understanding about English-speaking co uh, countries. And also teachers are expected to teach English through English, which is known as TEE or TET. And here's the brief information about all of my teach teacher participants. Like I said, I had nine, and three of them are male teachers. And one distinctive feature of my participants is only three teachers has less than three years of teaching experience. So um, the rest of them has almost more than 20 years of experience. So they are very um, experienced teachers in some sense. And all of teachers are working in middle, um, public middle school, and they are mainly uh, they are from different schools. And I try to um, distinguish that by different letters <coughs> A, B, C, D, E. And here I have information for my um, professor participants. Um, just take a look at it, and you may realize that the second participant has very different from the the other two. So he is in uh, his 50s, and he got, and three professors um, got P their PhDs or in the United States. Um, the second participant, P2, he does not have any experience in teaching secondary level, so he did not teach middle school or high school. And the, if you look at the last row, their beliefs about teachers or proficiency, he only shows very strict attitudes toward expected level of or proficiency for middle school teachers, such as it is required, it's not an option. So they need to be very proficient to, teach, to be a good English teacher. But other two, P1 and P3, shows, well, it is desirable, but it's, it's not like requirement. So their answers, I mean, P1, P3, they are more like, uh, they are more similar to teacher participants' answers about their positions of proficiency. Maybe because of his background in, I don't know. So I conducted one-time semi-structure semi interviews with all, all of my participants, and usually it took like 45 minutes. I visited their schools or, or offices, and these are uh, main themes that I discuss with my participants, like what's the purpose of learning and teaching English, and what's your, what do you think about an ideal English teacher, and how can it be different in your reality? Like, can you be an ideal teacher in your classroom, and what kind of challenges do you experience in their classroom to be that kind of teacher, and is there any influence of proficiency or something like that? I did not start with uh, my question about challenges with proficiency specifically because I don't want to direct them to um, only talk about oral proficiency. So first I start with um, challenges in general and then I move on to like, do, I heard this has been an issue for teachers and do you have similar kind of experience or something like that. And for professors I asked also about what do you think about an effective English teachers and their attributes and their thoughts of a cur current English education program. To um, triangulate my data, I asked them to open their classroom, but uh, only one of nine students allowed me to in her classroom. So, <laughs> so I followed her for one day, and I observed, observed three of her class. And my teacher participants, uh, instead of opening their classes to me, they kind of suggested me to visit um, open classes, which were scheduled for administrative purposes. So these are already scheduled, and teachers are assigned to prepare those kind of open classes. So I visited um, the setting, but I don't think it's really authentic setting, so I did not, I don't know. And also I exchanged some emails with some of my teacher participants after I come back to the States. And I think this model, before I discuss uh, my research questions, to, uh, to answer my research question, this picture really gives a holistic view of my research. So I, I thought it's better to start with this picture. 
So the subject here are teacher participants because the, I'm looking at their teaching practices and their perceptions in society. And their objects are building communicative competence and also they need to prepare students for exams. So I understand these two objects are kind of contradicting each other. It's really kind of impossible to achieve both of them together. So the outcome, as an outcome, they concentrate more on teaching grammar and reading because of the mediating artifacts. <coughs> they have very high stake tests, and those tests are usually grammar and reading oriented. So, so um, they choose to just concentrate on grammar and reading. And also there are some rules to, they need to follow. There are some contents to be covered within the limited time range, and also they need to prepare for exams. And uh, in Korea, we have pretty rigid um, curriculum, so they need to fit in those curriculum as well. And also in community, these are the people who have the same upset with teacher in this um, society. So we have students, parents, school administrators, or sometimes from um, Ministry of Education. And teachers need to satisfy their these community members' goals and um, yeah goals. And I think this last thing shows really interesting um, point because I observe there is a very clear division of labor because all public schools I visited have native <coughs> English speaking teachers, so they see I mean Korean teachers see. Um, teaching, reading, and grammar as their responsibility, but at the same time, they say native speaking teachers should teach um, speaking and culture. So those kind of responsibilities are kind of separated, and they took this part because um, they have native speaking teachers usually in um, their school setting. So in terms of their perceptions of or proficiency, like I said, there is a mismatch between teaching goals and reality. All of nine teacher participants answer building communicative activity, communicative um, competence as their personal goal as English teachers, but at the same time, they should um, kind of adjust their object to satisfy what they are required to do in reality. So, this is very different from previous studies. So they don't, they, they said they don't feel very strong needs to achieve native life or proficiency because they are actually teaching grammar and reading oriented um, stuff in their classroom. And there is a strong separation and avoidance. Um, they are more likely to teach grammars and readings and they depend uh, on native speaking teachers or sometimes teaching materials such as YouTube or some videos or some city cities to teach speaking or other cultural understandings. And my interpretation here, I thought they are trying to show their authorities by teaching reading and grammar and those are the two um, main areas they have um, very strong knowledge so they, sh they I guess they want to show their authorities by teaching those two main um, topics, grammars and readings. So these are the small quotes that I found when I um, for contextual challenges. Um, so there are challenges by students, their passive attitudes, students' lack of motivation to participate in communicative activities in the classroom because they understand this will not be on the test. And also, um, usually, stu uh, the classroom <coughs> size is really big, so the one class I observed has more than 35 students in one classroom, so it's really difficult to um, satisfy um, all di their different needs because they are in all different levels in terms of their proficiency and grades. And also, the uh, there are some challenges by the educational system. Sometimes teachers are talking about text, textbooks are not really authentic. It's not really interesting for to students and also curriculum. Exam-oriented environments, 
and those exams are usually grammar and read, reading oriented and also large class size and limited budget to buy um, teaching materials like English books or some interesting stuff. And the first two things in other columns, they are more related to teacher education and professional development. So teachers are talking about their experiences back in teacher education that did not really prepare them to be a communicative good, te uh, good teacher. And also they reported very important issues re with regard to professional development, even though they are still want to learn more about pedagogy and language itself, English, but still they <coughs> report those um, professional development is not really applicable in their setting, even though um, those professional development is provided in Korea, still there is some kind of gap. And also they reported lack of collaboration among teachers and sometimes they experience conflicts with native speaking teachers because they perceive teaching um, speaking language and culture as a responsibility for native speaking teachers but they don't see uh, the subject that way. So there is conflicts. So I can re-categorize uh, my previous quotes into like this picture but we talked about this already. So my implications for teacher education is, um, as we talk in social culture perspective, teachers are con continuous learners of teaching. However, I think they are still learners of English itself, so they need to be very no knowledgeable in their content area and also pedagogic uh, knowledge because that's what their stakeholders are expecting from them. So they need to satisfy their needs and also, we need to question the practicability of the knowledge they, uh, they learn throughout their teaching, teacher education and also professional de development because many of my participants answered those knowledge is not really uh, applicable. I will not say not useful. So they, teachers need to be really adaptive experts throughout professional development, which means they need to adjust and adapt any kind of knowledge into their classroom. So they can use those kind of knowledge in their real classroom. And eight of nine teacher participants answer they are members of some teacher study groups. So it shows kind of um, the benefits of community of practice. So it's really important to provide places for teachers to discuss their difficulties and also issues. And throughout um, those kind of discussions, they can figure out what they need to do to overcome their difficulties. So these are selected references for my study. And I think my presentation is done here.